Good morning. Welcome to SQL in the City. We're going to start off with an exercise to kind of warm up. This here is a software feature. Who wants a software feature? Okay. And this This is an upgrade. Who wants an upgrade? You gotta blow your upgrade. Okay, now we've got trouble. This is a security update. Grant, can you get these security updates out as fast as possible? <laughs> okay, so this is chaotic. But you know, the fact is that software releases are often chaotic. We need to release software these days more and more frequently. Business requirements change, you need to get fixes out, security updates out. And the challenge is you need to do that safely. You can't break your application um, in the process. So at Redgate, we call that ship often, ship safe. You know, whether you call it DevOps or Agile or Lean um, or Adaptive, these are all kind of tribal names for the evolution towards more frequent deployments. If you want to think of it as an equation, think of IT performance as a function of throughput um, and stability. And one of the challenges with shipping uh, changes is the database. And the database is complicated for two reasons. The first reason is that, in fact, database development practices are less mature than application practices. Think of how many people have got their applications in source control, but not their databases. And the second reason um, is that the change itself to the database is often more complicated, because you need to preserve the state. You need to preserve the data, not lose the data. Okay. So, in fact, those of you who were here last year will remember that in the keynotes, we spoke about our website, Simple Talk. And Simple Talk is Redgate's technical journal. So there are thousands of articles for DBAs um, and for developers. And in the keynote, it starred Steve Jones. Hey, Steve. And Steve was, in fact, Steve still is um, a DBA. And Steve's worried about looking after our data and making sure that the servers are up and running. But we also had a guy called David Simler. And David was a developer, and he was keen on agile. He wanted to change things fast, and he wanted to, in fact, improve simple talk uh, as fast as possible. So, how many of you were here last year, out of curiosity? Quite a few, good. So, you remember we actually made a change to this application last year, and as I predicted, uh, we had a problem. We had a bug in the application. We had to roll back our change. We then had to fix it and redeploy it. Sadly, this year David's not going to be joining us. I hear he's on gardening leave? Well, oh, not quite. David's back in the office, and he's working on SQL Lighthouse, uh, a new product that we've launched into the today. Hello, I'm Jonathan Hector. And I'm the product manager at Redmond, probably the most exciting job of all. How do we build positive, reliable tooling so that David can make changes as fast and as quickly as possible? Yet, how can we set up a process where Steve is confident that the data and the systems are going to be safe throughout? Now, if I go over here to my dashboard today, I'll see that I've actually got a deployment. Somebody's made a change to our production environment. I've got all my environments listed here in SQL Lighthouse. I have my integration environment over on the left my staging environment, and I have two databases in the production environment. Somebody's actually changed something that it's detected. And if I go through here and look at it, what I'll find is that uh, somebody's actually changed the function. This function is going to have millions and millions of rows go through it, and it's going to cause problems because it's been deployed to only one of our production servers. Okay, Steve, I think I know what that might be. Uh, the BI team were saying yesterday that they wanted to put some new engagement metrics and add them onto the site. Yeah, in fact, there we go. It's the BI team. Yeah, and so that's bad. I mean, that upset me. Mm -hmm. They made a change without letting me know. And you guys, you guys are lucky that Grant's not up here. <laughs> if Grant was up here, it'd be really scary. Grant hates these changes. And the problem is that right now they've made this change to only one of the two production servers that back the site. So users are experiencing inconsistent behavior on the site. Okay, Steve, I can see that's going to be a problem. What, what we see here is this is actually detecting database drift or the delta between schemas. And so the delta could be between two environments like integration and staging or staging and production. 
could be between two servers in production as we see here, or it could just be a single database where we find the change between what we knew the schema to be and what it is right now. And as a matter of fact, this change is causing problems because if I go to my alerts here, what I'll find is that we've actually got a long running query here. And that's because that store procedure change or that function change, not only was it only deployed to one server, but it's actually causing us problems. Okay, so, so what are we gonna do? Well, I think what we really need to do is we need to roll this back. And when I go back and think about what we did the last time we released stuff, we actually went ahead and tagged that release in version control. So this is part of our branch by release strategy so that we know exactly what was deployed to production. If I look here in SQL Compare, I can see that over on the left is what we have in source control, that's our tag. And then over on the right, I have what's in production. So I can go ahead and generate a deployment script, which is uh, probably what many of you do on a regular basis to figure out what you need to put into production. I can look through here and I can see what the changes are. Uh, now, I normally would want to run this through our process, and we're going to show you how to better do that. But for now, I'm just going to let SQL Compare deploy this change back. And if I go back over and look at my uh, dashboard, what I should see is that this will detect that we've put the production system back, hopefully. <laughs> and now everything's working. Okay, so it's clearly not okay to let developers push changes uh, into production. But what do we need to do? We need to have some kind of a process that manages the application lifecycle. So we can manage the requirement stage, we can manage the development stage, and we can manage the operation stage. And that process really is called application lifecycle management. Um, and we call the database part of that database lifecycle management, or DLM. And what DLM enab enables you to do is to really get better visibility into those database changes. It allows you to make those database changes more predictable, and it allows you to make those database changes uh, more efficient. So in fact, what the Redgate products do, the Redgate product, uh, DLM products do, is they kind of plug into your existing infrastructure. So they plug into your source control system, they'll plug into your continuous integration server, they'll plug into your release management environment, and they'll help you treat that application, sorry, the database like an application. But right now we've got a problem. So we've got this uh, BI fix, we need to deploy that BI fix um, into production. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the simple talk development environment and show you that the best way to do this is not to kind of push hot fixes without testing into production, but rather to do it properly. To develop, to test, to deploy, and then to monitor that deployment. So I'm going to open SSMS up. In SSMS, I've got the change here that I know the BI team wanted to make. And I'm going to commit this change to source control along with a comment. By committing it to source control, this is also going to kick off our continuous integration process. Okay, so now what, what's happened here, of course, is John started to put this thing in source control. And source control is the foundation of database lifecycle management. Once you've got your database in source control, you can start managing it and protecting it. You can do things like control access to who can make changes to that database. You can track and label those changes, and you can roll back those changes um, when you need to. We've been talking about databases and source control for, for years now. How many of you out there have got your database in source control? Anyone? Yeah, it's pretty good. About 30%. You know, once you've got your database in source control, you know, DLM's a journey. So the next step in that journey is to start thinking about a thing called continuous integration. And what continuous integration is, is a developer practice, and it requires developers, and that includes SQL developers, to check their code or the changes into a, into a repository um, on a regular basis. And what happens with those check-ins is you get an automated build and you get automated tests. And the result of that is that you can in fact validate and verify the change uh, very, very quickly and get very, very quick feedback uh, about that change. Now, as a DBA, the thought of anybody making regular continuous changes in my database raises all kinds of red flags. Far too often, those of us who are DBAs, we get sent deployment scripts from development and they cause performance issues or stability issues in production and we have to just deploy them. You know, too often we don't get to have input into development choices or into the architectural decisions, so the thought of continuous anything just scares me. Data of HCI, though, is really important to the development team. It means that we get fast feedback on our changes. If something's gone wrong, we know straight away and we can fix it. Tests, so unit tests, give us confidence that we're not introducing regressions. 
and static analysis tests give us confidence that we're not introducing bad patterns or bad practices that can build into technical debt. We know that our changes are going to be deployed successfully when it comes to the production deployment. We're not going to get called up in the middle of the night because our changes have been already deployed to a real environment. In this case, deployed to integration after every single commit. Most of all, though, it means that we can get on with developing the features that the business need. We don't have to worry about preparing for deployments, working out when the next deployment is, what's deployed where, or doing the deployments themselves by hand. And certainly, you don't get called in the middle of the night. That's my job. Right? <laughs> I get called in the middle of the night. Now, Jonathan's actually right. I think continuous integration is a fabulous idea for software development. I really, really believe it allows you to build software faster and at a higher quality. I know if I get deployment scripts from Jonathan that have gone through the CI process, that they've been tested. They've gone through a whole series of tests. And not only that, when they get to places like integration, we run those tests against databases that are populated with data, representative data of production, the same SKU, the same size, same volumes of production data. I know when artifacts come to me through this process from Jonathan's team, that they've been tested, automatically tested through all kinds of automated tests, and also manual tests that the QA department has had the chance to look at them before we move them further into our deployment process. I know that if I get these artifacts from him, that I minimize the chance of having any kind of issue when I deploy to production. So now that's been deployed to integration, I'm going to go into SQL Lighthouse, and I'm going to give this state a name. By giving this a name here in integration, it means that Steve and I can track this together as it moves through the environments. My previous version was 4.1.78, so I'm going to call it 4.1.79 BI fix. Okay, so now we've done the testing, we can start thinking about pushing this change uh, to production. But we need to do it safely, because we don't want to break it at this point. And the way to do it safely is to automate the process as, as far as possible, because what that does is it eliminates human error. We want to be sure that we can deliver the right changes to the right target server. I'm going to open up our release management tool. So when I look in my release management tool, I can see my three environments. I've got the integration environment, a staging environment, and a production environment. I can see that my latest changes in that new release has been deployed into the integration environment. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to promote it to our staging environment. Our staging environment is an exact copy of our production environment. It's meant so that we can dry run our deployment. Our DLM tooling is now checking that staging is an exact match for what is currently in production. Once it's checked that they're the same, it's going to go and generate the updates uh, resources, a SQL update script, a changes report so we can see what's changing, and generate any warnings if there are any risks in this deployment. After that, the tool is actually going to pause. I can't deploy this without a review from the DBA team. I need Steve's help to then deploy this into staging and production. So now this is important because what Jonathan's doing is involving Steve in the process. And release management is really about development and product and operations. You can't have only one side of the equation there. Um, now one of the challenges is to try and get development organizations to talk to operations organizations. The whole DevOps movement is there to try and break, break down the barrier between development and operations. And there have books being written about how to, in fact, get these organizations to collaborate. Our tools can't solve this problem. They certainly can help in terms of encouraging that collaboration and reinforcing the process of handing over between developers and the operations organization. Now, we've seen that this is paused here. And if I actually go look at my dashboard, my release manager dashboard, myself and my DBAs will actually find that we've got a deployment waiting for us. The you know, tooling has notified us that there's something that needs to happen that we need to approve. And you'll notice that I can assign this to myself. I can not only do that, but I can also review the script. And I can see what changes are going to be made. I can see what objects are going to be affected. I can certainly see if there's any data loss or any potential problem. I can use all my knowledge and experience to actually go through this script before it's run. I can also see if there's any warnings or potential issues here. In this case, I know there's not. I'm just going to approve this. We'll leave that typo. And what can happen now is the tool will continue with the automated deployment. So I don't have to do any of the work. There's no human error. I don't have to click in a GUI somewhere. This is going to make the deployment complete. We can see it worked fine, all green lights. So I can then choose to promote this to production. Once I do that, the same thing is going to happen. 
Now, the Redgate DLM products actually do two things at this point. The first thing is it's going to go look at production again, and it's going to check that we haven't had any drift, that nobody has changed production between the time that we built this script and right now. Because it could be hours or days between the time we deployed a staging and the time we deployed a production. So if production has changed, we potentially have issues when we go to deploy. I'm sure many of you have experienced that in the past. If everything is fine in production, this proceeds. The second thing that happens, though, is this runs the exact same script that ran to integrate for the staging. The same script that I just reviewed. It doesn't get rebuilt, regenerated, nothing changes. Whatever ran in staging now gets run to production. And this time, Steve, it's deployed to the second production database, too. Always a good thing to deploy to all the servers. We like that. If I go back to our dashboard, I should now see that it's been deployed everywhere. And you'll notice that the tag or the name that Jonathan gave it integration has been deployed to staging and production. It's amber because it wants me to know that there's been a change, and I need to acknowledge that these are, in fact, the correct changes and the correct deployment. Once this is done, we should be in good shape. And this will go back to monitoring the system and letting us know if anything else changed. Develop, test, deploy, monitor. That's part of our software pipeline. You certainly can't forget monitoring. That's just as important to the DBA as everything else. So well done, guys. You know, the trend towards shifting software more frequently is unstoppable. But we can't sacrifice safety. So we can't just forget about the database and hope that bad things don't happen, because they will. This database lifecycle thing is, is really a journey. And what you need to do is think about your organization and decide what the next step is. So for example, if you've got an application in source control, put your database in source control. If you're doing continuous integration of your application, start thinking about doing continuous integration with your database. And if you're automating the deployment of your applications and doing release management, do the same for your database. And then finally, reach out across that organizational boundary. Developers, Speak to your DBA. They're not so bad. Sometimes. <laughs> and DBA speak to your developers. Because together, you can ship often and you can ship safe. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.